the game is over. The Toronto Raptors coming in and in only their second year making the playoffs. Move along and will face the Philadelphia 76ers. So the Raptors swept a year ago by the Knicks, turn the tables this time and win the series three games to two. Welcome into another edition of the Raptors Pod Table Podcast. Gilbert Gregor here on a very special occasion, making this a very special edition of the Raptors Pod Table. Today is May 4th, 2021, and on this date, 20 years ago, the Toronto Raptors traveled to Madison Square Garden for a winner-go-home decisive Game 5 against the New York Knicks, earned a four-point win, a three game to two series win for the first ever playoff series victory in Toronto Raptors franchise history. Vince Carter was a superstar for this team, blossomed into an all NBA performer, a bigger superstar than he was even the year prior when the Raptors made their first ever playoff appearance and lost to the same Knicks in three games. Antonio Davis that season became an all-star and was the second man after Carter. Alvin Williams, Big performances in the playoffs. Chris Childs, Charles Oakley, two former Knicks that had a hand in eliminating their former team. Junkyard Dog, fan favorite, Del Curry, Sharpshooter, Keon Clark, each had a hand in this decisive game five in which the Raptors moved on to the second round for the first time in franchise history. On the sidelines, a Hall of Famer. Lenny Wilkins, in his first season as a Toronto Raptors head coach after a stint with the Atlanta Hawks, led the franchise to heights it had never reached before. Heights it has since surpassed, but this was the foundation. When you look at the title of 2019 or the 2016 Conference Finals run, it all started with what Coach Wilkins was able to lead this team to do in 2001. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to share that Coach Wilkins joined us to relive some of the memories from that season. He spoke on his love for the fans and the city of Toronto and really just had a joy going and talking about some of these good memories from a momentous occasion and momentous season that happened 20 years ago to the date. So without further ado, the second winningest head coach in NBA history, a Hall of Famer as a player and a coach, the Lenny Wilkins interview for the Raptors Pod Table Podcast. Coach, once again, thank you for joining. Before we get into anything else, how are you doing? How's life treating you these days? Well, it's uh, we're doing fine. You know, we got both our shots, and uh, you know, I still don't run around in crowds. Uh, <laughs> right. It's just be trying to be safe and. Uh, but but I, everything is good. That's good. That's good. That, that's good to hear. Um, obviously, your your accolades speak for themselves as a player and a coach here in the Hall of Fame uh, on both sides. But one thing I noticed is, is just about the start that you got was actually as a player coach um, and, and as a, a part of the younger generation and not necessarily understanding how things worked, um, you know, in the 60s and 70s. That stands out to me. So, so for those who might not understand how the concept of being a player coach works, what does that entail? And, and is it easier or, or more difficult to execute both roles when you can kind of do as a player what you're asking the team to do as a coach? Well, I thought it was going to be easy, but it got harder as time went on because we were starting to get a lot of young players coming into the league, mm-hmm. guys who only had one year of college experience or none. And so that was requiring more teaching, more explaining, explaining, more showing. Uh, It was going to take a lot more time to help them develop and grow into uh, the athletes that we thought they could be. So that's why eventually I retired, because I think I could have probably played another year or two. But uh, it, it just was taking too much time and uh and I realized that uh coaching was something I was going to go to because I I liked it, I enjoyed it. Uh I liked being a part of the game and making things happen. So uh so I uh, in 75 I retired uh and and went straight to coaching. Yeah, you know, I'm actually glad you you said it that way or or or, or framed it like that because 
I plan on asking you, and, and you kind of touched on it a little bit, but just at what point as a player, and I guess I ask this because there's so many players in today's game that seem to have the traits of a future coach, but then they're asked about becoming a coach at some point in their career, and they don't seem to be interested at all, or they're extremely interested. So it feels like there's just an aha moment. So for you, I guess what I'm asking is, what was that moment, or, or what was it that made you realize that coaching was going to be the path for you so much so that it started during your career, and you're successful doing it. You won a championship in 1979 with Seattle. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, uh, I, I think I, I really understood the game. I, I love the game, and and I knew how to work with people, talk with people. Uh, I knew how to set things up, how to run a training camp. You know, uh, I knew how to take advantage of the talent that players had. I knew how to put them in position to be successful, and, and you know, it, it, it all came to me, and I, and I just felt that, well, you know, I could really help. I mean, I could help them develop, grow, and, and, and be successful. And, and so my love of the game just increased. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was uh, something that uh, I looked forward to. Um, it was, uh, you know, taking a young talent, seeing it develop, grow, and, and seeing how good it could be. So uh, that, to me, was a lot of fun. I mean, when I took over the Sonics and uh, they were – Five and seventeen. Everybody was saying they were terrible. They they weren't gonna. Nothing was gonna happen with this team. And and I believe that I could make a difference. So and, and we were able to. You know, I, I had great assistant and a guy named uh, Dick Helm, who was my assistant coach, and I used uh, his knowledge of the game as well. You know, so uh, it. You know, it, it to compete. You know, go against teams that uh, were winning and, and very competitive. I just thought it was something that uh, I wanted to look forward to. I got you. That makes sense. And one of the things I noticed when I was looking, uh, you know, you, you played in Seattle. Uh, you coached Seattle. You played in Portland. You coached Portland. You played in Cleveland. You coached Cleveland. You played for the St. Louis Hawks. You coached the Atlanta Hawks. And, and I think that gets to, you know, you know where I'm going there, the, the first franchise that you didn't play for that you coached uh, was the Toronto Raptors and that, that summer of 2000 when you decided uh, to take that job with the Raptors, you know, a, a franchise that had only been around for five years. Obviously, they had a big superstar in Vince Carter, but with the pedigree that you had as a championship coach that had you know won a gold medal as a coach as well and, and done so many things as a head coach, what was it about that job in, 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 a, in a country that was reacclimating or getting reaccustomed to professional basketball that drew you to decide to lead the Toronto Raptors in 2000? Well, uh, I thought it, the, prop, the fact that it was in Toronto, you know, uh, they were new to uh, the game of professional basketball, and I thought, wow, this would be a great, great opportunity, a huge challenge to see what we could do there. And after meeting the general manager and then getting to meet the ownership group, uh, I, I became more intrigued mm -hmm. that uh, let, let, let's see what we could do here. And, and I thought the fans, they had a good fan base, mm -hmm. and it became even better because uh, the, the, the fans were enthusiastic. They wanted to see their team win. They supported their team. They came to the games. And, and so those were the challenges that uh, I thought were great, you know, and let's see what we could do here if we could get them to the playoffs, you know, and uh, uh, it, it was, uh, it wasn't easy because I was living out of the country and, you know, uh, being in Toronto, you had to go through customs every mm -hmm. time we traveled. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was uniquely different, but, but, you know, it was, uh, the players were receptive, they worked hard, uh, and uh, and like I said, the fan support was tremendous. Absolutely. So, so you you take over this team, and um, again, relatively new to the league, and and had a big star in Vince Carter. And again, you you mentioned the excitement surrounding the team and, and the great fan base. So, with the challenges that kind of faced you, what were your expectations for that team going into the year? Well, uh, to be competitive to see how we could grow and develop, you know, how good we could get. Uh, I don't think anyone predicted that we'd make the playoffs that year, mm -hmm. but uh, we did. 
and we got into the playoffs. And then once once you get there, it becomes very competitive because you want to go on and on and on, and you want to see how well you can do. And uh, and I felt that uh, we were a team uh, that probably could go a little further than people thought. Mm-hmm. And uh, but it, it wasn't going to be easy. Right. So, so I ask you as a coach, and you've coached very successful teams and, and all different types of teams, is there a specific moment with that team or with teams in general where you realize that they're capable of doing something special? Is it in training camp? Is it early on in the season? Is it a win streak? Is it somehow that they respond to a challenge that you give them um, that you just kind of realize, okay, this team is capable of doing something special? Well, I think what happens is that you, uh, you, you know, it takes – training camp it takes a season uh to get going and once you're 25 games into the season you get a chance to see where you're going to be because now you've had a chance to go against various teams you had you have a chance to see you know are we growing are we developing you know uh what's happening with us and i thought that we were getting better you know i really did uh so i thought we had uh 25 games into the season I thought we could make the playoffs, and and who knows what's going to happen once you get there. So you, you mentioned that the team ended up going forty-seven and thirty-five, finishing fifth in the Eastern Conference, and it set up a meeting with the New York Knicks. Uh, the Knicks had just made the finals the year before, uh, two years before. Sorry, they made the finals two years before. Um, you're a, a New York guy, and earlier in the year, um, there was that trade for Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson was traded for Chris Childs, and a few years before. Uh, Charles Oakley and, and Marcus Camby were traded for each other. So there was a lot of familiarity there on both sides. Going into that series, did that add a little bit extra, um, you know, with, you know, obviously all those extra dynamics between the two teams, the familiarity, all on top of it already being the playoffs. What was the mentality going up against, uh, you know, an established franchise with so much history like the New York Knicks? Well, I, I knew it wasn't going to be easy, but I, I truly believe that we could beat them. I, I really did, you know, and, uh, and you know, and, and we talked with the players about it, you know, the, the preparation, how we're going to have to really be ready to compete because this team does have that playoff history. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but once we got into the playoffs, uh, I, I, I felt confident. I felt that uh, we could win. And and we did, you know, uh, we beat them. It wasn't easy. Nothing's easy, right. you know, but uh, uh, it was fun. It was, uh, and, and once we got there, I thought, who, who knows? You know, you, you, you get past them, you gain a little confidence. And then from then on, uh, things uh, were, uh, were all, po- all, everything was possible. Right, right. I, you know, t- t- take a look at talk about it, it not being easy. I was, I was, you know, looking back at the series, and I vaguely remembered a little bit. I, I was seven years old when that series was going on, but I do remember uh, how the series kind of went played out, and just my familiarity with the Raptors and and being an entertaining team because there was a lot of excitement surrounding that new team that had the big superstar, and, and just looking at you know you lose game one on the road and you come and steal home court advantage in game two. And and then you go in and it's the best two out of three. Obviously, nowadays, the first round of the playoffs is the best four out of seven. But that high stakes, does that really just impact the intensity just to a different level of those best of five series in the first round, the way things used to be back then? Oh, no question about it. No question about it. (laughs) Yeah, because, you know, you don't have a lot of room for error, Mm -hmm. believe me. And if you don't play well, if you don't get off to a good start, it can become very difficult for you. So, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of intensity in the game, and, uh, you know, you have to have to be ready. You know, there, there's not room for a lot of error mm-hmm. in situations like that. Right. So, you know, you, you the team falls down 1-2 going into game four. As a coach, as a motivator, as, as someone who tries to connect with the players and, and see so much in them that sometimes they don't see in themselves – what is the message to your team when it's literally win or go home and you have to win two games in a row to move on? And obviously the team re- received the message well, but. Yeah, I think, well, you have to show them the boss, the possibilities. I mean, we try to 
uh, I, you know, I would break down the, the video. I mean, me and my staff would watch it. Uh, cause I didn't want the players to, to watch the whole game, but I picked out the certain areas that I wanted them to see mm-hmm. that where we could be successful, mm-hmm. you know, what, we could do in those situations and show it to them mm. so that they could see and, and realize that they could be successful. So, so, you, you know, I try to prepare the team, get them really ready, really uh, letting them know that we were very capable of, mm. of uh, success. And, and so that's what you try and do as a coach and you try to utilize that and take advantage of it. So, obviously going to game five in Madison Square Garden, we talked about the, the history that you know, precedes the the Knicks franchise and the Raptors were again the the new kids on the block, haven't been around the NBA for for just a few years, really, and, and uh, uh, a fraction of time in comparison to the Knicks franchise. What do you remember most about that Game Five and and winning the first playoff series in franchise history uh, against the the established franchise? And it was it was a, a tough game, a hard fought game all the way through, and and doing it on the road. Uh, with so much behind it and, and so much emotion and, and so many ties between the teams, what stands out to you most about that team getting it done on that stage? Well, I, I guess I was just happy and excited for them. Uh, listen, I had played in Madison Square Garden as a player, right? And I loved playing there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I knew the fans were knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. The fans were great, and uh, so uh, for me to be there, uh, it was exciting mm-hmm. and. Uh, and I knew that the game meant a lot to our players and that, uh, again, if you have success, uh, it can carry over. Mm-hmm. And, and I wanted it to carry over. So, so like I said, you know, having played at Madison Square Garden, being there, it was exciting. And, um, and I hate to say this, but, you know, it's, it was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. and, uh, you know, unless I look at some video, I, I don't. I don't remember much about the game, yeah. but uh, but I do uh, know that uh, what a place to play, mm-hmm. and uh, and 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 like I said, I think that as a coach, and I tell all young coaches that uh, preparation is so important mm-hmm. when you approach a, uh, any game, not right. just a big game, but any game. If you can prepare your team, if you can get them ready. Uh, so that they can take advantage of situations out there, then it, it's a plus for you. Right, right. I understand that completely. And, and you know, just thinking about that, and obviously it, it, it paid off in, in the end with the team, you know, earning that, earning the win and, and going on to, to move on to, to face Philadelphia in one of the best mm-hmm. seri- series of, of all time in that duel between Vince Carter and, and Allen Iverson. Uh, I, I won't get too much into that series, but I do want to ask you just as far as as, a, as your history as a player and a coach, was that duel one of the, the best you've probably ever seen between any two players? Well, it, it was great. I mean, I've seen some pretty good ones, and that was certainly uh, one of them, you know. Both players uh, have huge impacts on the game, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, and neither team is going to be successful without mm-hmm. their star player. Right. And for for them, it was Iverson, and for us, it was Vince. You know, uh, Vince was uh, growing and developing and getting better all the time. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, it was a big game. When when you coached Vince, did you ever imagine that he would play until he was forty three years old? <laughs> No telling, you know, uh, because it, it depends on what comes along. Mm-hmm. Uh, a number of things have to happen. One, you got to stay healthy, right. you know, and your love of the game has to grow. Uh, with me, uh, the thing was that I had an opportunity to coach, mm-hmm. and it was something that was very intriguing, you know, being a player coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I would, uh, today, I would say that it's too difficult. I don't think you can do it mm-hmm. because you've got too much work to right. do, you know. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, to play until you're 43, that, Hey, that's huge. Yeah. That is huge, yeah. you know, and not many guys can do that. And, uh, so Vince is exceptional there. Mm-hmm. You know, I was, I was going to ask you about that. Just, just how much basketball do you watch now or how much do you, do you consume? Because I was going to ask you, um, a few, it's been a few years now, but you know, being the coach that kind of orchestrated the first real playoff run in Toronto that laid the groundwork for two years ago, the team winning their first championship, and to kind of see that that foundation that you really helped lay 
come into fruition in the in the sense of the team winning a championship and those those fans and the fan bases come around the team to like even at a greater level now and I know it's kind of what you talked about before with the fans being so great and now they have that reputation because of that playoff run so I don't know if you had you know any thoughts about watching that and just the you know having a hand in again blazing the trail for the franchise to get to that level Oh, I was excited about it. I watched the playoffs. I watched all of that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of you know, I didn't miss one of those games, and and I rooted for Toronto. I was happy for them. Uh, I thought the fans deserved it. They backed their team, and and I liked the way they played. I thought they played smart. They played hard. Uh, they came every night ready to play, mm-hmm. and and so it was a great series. And and to see them win it, uh, yeah. I don't watch as much basketball now. Mm. Uh, I'm uh, I still watch some of the games, mm. but uh, I don't know if they play the kind of defense today that they used to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't. I just don't know that they work as hard at it. Uh, you know. I mean, certainly uh, guys. Uh, the three point point shot is is huge mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. Those guys come down. They're looking for it right away. Looking for it in transition. You know, but uh, but I was happy for Toronto and I watched it. I thought they deserved it. Uh, they have, uh, like I said, I uh, the fan base there is outstanding and uh, and they deserved it. Uh, the, the players worked hard. Uh, they had a good team. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, I think it just, you know, speaks so much to the the culture that is there. And, and you know, again, the, the credit that goes to what you and that team in 2001 were able to do and, and winning that first you know series and coming so close uh, to, to, to getting to the conference finals. And it feels like that shot by Kawhi Leonard righted some wrongs from what happened in game seven in 2001 to kind of see it yeah. come, come full circle. Uh, you know, with that is, is kind of amazing. It's the type of history you can't really write uh, in, in a story much better than that. So it's just amazing. And, and again, thank you so much for, for your time and joining in and, and uh, talking and sharing some memories from that team and just kind of talking about the mentality that, that goes into leading a team and, and how you were able to lead that team to the heights you were able to lead them to, uh, you know, 20 years ago, which is amazing to think. Well, time flies. And uh, believe me, I loved it. I've been back to Toronto just once mm-hmm. since then. But, uh, but I love the city. I thought it was great. Uh, you know, maybe one of these days I'll get back there. Uh, but... Uh, Certainly, uh, it was a great time in my career, and uh, and I certainly appreciated it. For sure, Coach. Well, thank you so much again for for joining me here. I really appreciate your time, and and again, just it's an, it's always an honor to talk to someone you know with the you know, the the history and, and being a Hall of Famer on, on multiple fronts and the second winningest coach uh, in league history. So again, I cannot thank you enough, and I really appreciate your time, Coach. So uh, take care. Okay, thank you, and thank you for having me. Of course. Mm-hmm. There you have it. Through the eyes of a Hall of Famer, the 2000-2001 Toronto Raptors season, it was certainly a treat to feel like we could kind of go back into the huddle and go back into the locker room and learn more about that season from that perspective and relive one of the first momentous historic occasions in Toronto Raptors franchise history and, and one that truly did lay the foundation and the groundwork for what has come of this franchise over the next few decades. And to hear the indelible impact that the city of Toronto, the Raptors fans and the Raptors franchise had on Coach Wilkins and his family in such a short period of time for me really just shows me that these things obviously don't happen overnight, but what we see and what we know the Raptors for has been cultivated since that moment. Since those first couple of playoff runs and those first playoff series victories, when you look and see those other milestones, the first conference finals appearance, the first title, and it's full circle to hear Coach Wilkins mention cheering for the Raptors during that finals run. So certainly thank Coach Wilkins for his time, an honor, a privilege. I don't feel like I can say it enough. The second winningest coach in NBA history, a Hall of Famer as a player and a coach. Certainly great to have him on here and a joy to hear everything that he had to say about a very special season. That'll do it for this edition of the Raptors Pod Table Podcast. We also thank you, the listeners, for tuning in. 
thank you the subscribers for subscribing and we ask you continue to subscribe and continue to tune in we'll have these in your feed every time a new episode drops wherever you get your podcast keep it locked in with us over on the raptors pod table we've got more post-game content as the season winds down everything raptors everything nba everything canada basketball and you can now catch us on youtube too the channel is global hoops official so we appreciate your subscriptions over there as well until next time thanks again for tuning in i'm gil mcgregor see you later